Thank you, Daniela. It is time for the headliner presented by Miller Lite. And let's get right to it. Our, our last guest of the year for 2020. I don't know if he's going to think that's a, a great thing or not, but it's Tigers General Manager Al Avila joins us. Al, thanks for your time. Really, really appreciate it. No, it's a pleasure to be on here, especially at Christmas time. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's where I want to begin, Al. I mean, you know, I've never, I, it, which is kind of not, over my years uh, through Detroit media, I've never talked to you. I, I knew Dave really, really well and uh, a lot of the GMs, but this, I'm really looking forward to this. This is the first time, and I have developed this sense that you are a gregarious fun-loving human being. Your interviews, you're upbeat no matter what's going on. I mean, Al Avila is the man. I mean, truly. So I'm kind of wondering, I would imagine that Al Avila this time of year must have some sort of Christmas tradition, whether it be, you know, a favorite holiday movie or you're picking out the Christmas goose or spiking the eggnog or singing carols around the <laughs> fireplace. I mean, is it, you know, baking Al's special cookies or, you know, your casserole? I mean, what does Al Avila, what are you known for this time of year? Well, there's a few things. Uh, favorite movie, uh, it's, uh, but, you know, the, the, uh, a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, um, and I watch every every version of it uh, during the holidays. Uh, so that's always been my best and uh, my favorite, should I say? And and, um, and as far as other stuff, uh, you know, really since my kids were very little and now they're in their thirties, um, my wife has always done Christmas cookies uh, with the kids. And so as they grew up and they, they got into their 20s and 30, we still had Christmas cookies, uh, even as adults. But then, of course, now we have grandchildren. So uh, making Christmas cookies is, uh, is a big part of the holidays for us uh, around Christmas time. So those are the two main things. But uh, also at home uh, for, for Christmas itself, and, and this, we do this on Christmas Eve, we, uh, we roast a pig, a whole entire pig. Um, usually in the backyard. Wow. Well, uh, one of these days, Al, you're gonna have a you're gonna have somebody just like show up unannounced, and it's gonna be me because a roasted pig sounds delicious. And Christmas Carol is one of my favorite. Now we're right around the same age, so I don't know. It, what I was really into as a kid, and I watched them all too, you know, whether it's, you know, Alistair Sims, original Owens, as, as Ebenezer Scrooge, and all the old ones, but I loved Mr. Magoo's A Christmas Carol. Did you ever <laughs> see, have you ever seen that one where, you know, a lot, a lot of odd songs and stuff, but that's still one of my all time favorites. I don't know yeah, if you no, I've seen them all, believe me. And, and my wife and I, uh, and sometimes depending on who's, he, who's here, uh, they they have to watch all the because that's basically that's all I watch during uh, during the time, especially the last week before going into the Christmas time. Now let's turn to some baseball now because I can go on about uh, the holidays and Christmas forever. Um, before we we talk about this year and what you've done in the off season and looking forward to next season, you had fifty eight games this season and. It was kind of fun. I mean, it was exciting. You know, my, my motto was, why not the Tigers? But when you look back now, and you've had a little bit of time, what was the most encouraging thing of that 58-game season where, you know, not that it gave you validation that I'm on the right track, but something that, you know, hey, we're, this is what we have. This we're, we're building. This is – we have a good foundation here. What, what, what gave you pause to think, yep, it's starting to come together? Well, you know, quite frankly, um, it was a very challenging season, and for us, I think one of my one of the things that I, I felt good about was how the players all came together and worked hard to make it work. In other words, the safety measures the, that they went through, they uh, the protocols, they they were really good at it, and, um, uh, and 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 their effort and and their desire to co to continue to play. Um, you know, as far as our, our future and, and our foundation, you know, we had guys that we had just dra uh, drafted, um, like Spencer Torkelson, uh, Riley Green, and our alternate training camp in Toledo, uh, amongst other players that we had there, uh, doing very, did, did, they did very well. And they, they were facing uh, pitching that were, you know, upper tier, AAA, and, and to some degree, big league pitching. Uh, where in a normal year they would have probably been playing at, at a much lower level. So 
uh, those were encouraging signs. Also bringing up guys like Isaac Paredes, uh, Willie Castro, uh, having them do well, uh, and particularly Willie uh, Castro, who uh, had a chance to be uh, well, actually was a nominee, a nominee for Rookie of the Year, uh, did very well. So those were encouraging factors. Um, you know, having Casey Mize and 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 um, and um, uh, you know some of the other guys uh, getting experience also is a big thing for us as we move forward. So. Um, you know, those are some of the things that I feel that, uh, you know, put us in a, you know, in a better position. Do you know when a player's ready uh, or do you have to almost wait until they get to the major league re level to find out if they're, if, you know, if they have the medal to make it? I, you know, I know that's kind of a loaded question, but, you know, everybody wants, you know, people want, you know, my, my motto, unleash the torque. I want to see torque in a Tiger uniform yesterday. I know that's not possible. Scooble came up and did well. Uh, Casey, I, I know Casey's going to rebound and have a great year. Um, but do you have a, a, an individual criteria when you know a player's ready, when you go to AJ or in the past guardian say, you know, it, it's time for so-and-so to – to come up yeah the, the, well the, the decisions to bring up a player you know uh sometimes are are uh, determined by by the circumstances that you're in uh i can tell you you know many years ago when we first brought, brought up buck farmer um it was out of necessity um uh, and so sometimes uh you you bring a player up just because uh out of necessity this year uh you saw a lot of players being brought up across the league uh, from a ball, and, and, and it was just the, the necessity of, uh, for pitching in particular, uh, mm -hmm. and, and in some cases uh, because of the virus, you saw position players being brought up uh, quite early. Uh, for us, it was Isaac Paredes that, that we brought up uh, rather early uh, in this case. But um, but ideally, what you would like to do is see a player uh, be very do very well, if not dominant. At, at each level that he's played, from A ball to double A to triple A to the big leagues. Uh, in the past, we've brought up players uh, straight from double A because we felt that they've dominated that league and they can skip uh, the triple A level. But those are far and few in between. Um, so ideally, we would like them to see, uh, you know, have you know, uh, a full season of at-bats, a full season of innings pitched, at at the uh, at the highest level uh and do very well before we bring them up it's not always the case um and even when you do that sometimes um obviously the, the player is going to struggle at the beginning because there is a major adjustment uh between uh triple a and and the big leagues and so uh, it's a process uh not everybody comes up and, and has success right away and even some people that do then usually have a setback because the league adjusts to them and then they got to adjust back. So it is a process that, that, that takes a while. And, um, but the good ones stick, you know, the good ones, even though they <laughs> might have to come up and down, um, once they come up at, at a certain level, the good ones, they stick and they, and they do well. Uh, you know, a good example was when we had Porcello, Porcello was, you know, brought up from, you know, uh, uh, kind of early. And then we had to send mm -hmm. him back and, and then he came back Verlander when he came up, struggled when we had Scherzer at the beginning struggled um but then they found their way and they became star players and so you know that that's kind of uh, really the norm to tell you the truth so we've got some players that uh, are close um obviously last year was a very challenging year because we didn't have a full season uh, of minor leagues but uh, we feel they got some work in uh this year with uh, you know obviously if we have some some good luck here we'll have a good uh, full season of the minor leagues and get them back on track, and um, hopefully we'll see we'll see them at the big leagues soon. You know, Al, that leads me to that question then, because I guess there's a debate. Did last year stunt the development of of some of these uh, uh, high end prospects that the Tigers have? Well, um, the players that were at the alternate training site in Toledo did have an advantage that they were able to play some games and, and practice and get really some high level one-on-one -on -one, uh instruction because it wasn't it, it was a smaller group so i would say that group um you know had uh had some development and and it was good for them and, and in particular like i mentioned before uh and for the hitters they were facing some upper 
level pitching right. that I felt was good for them uh, in their experience. Um, but overall, uh, it's not the same as having a full season and getting them, you know, 500 at bats or 100 and, you know, 30, 140 innings under their belt uh, pitched. So, uh, and then of course, the majority of the players in the minor leagues did not play at all. Uh, they were at home um, doing right. all, you know, what they could do. Uh, luckily for us, uh, we kept our staff, uh, our minor league staff intact. Uh, they were in touch with our players on a regular basis, uh, giving them uh, workout information, you know, as far as strength and conditioning, training, uh, and even to some degree where if a player had some baseball, uh, be able to do some baseball activities, we were giving them uh, instruction, uh, obviously virtually, uh, that they can follow on their own. Uh, so we, that so that was the best we can do, and 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 uh, you know, for at the very least, you know, uh, they stayed in shape. Some of these guys got even stronger, and mm-hmm. uh, and we and we feel that they'll be ready to go this coming spring. Now, I know you, you've gone on record and saying you're not looking for quick fixes. I know the free agent market is a little slow right now. Uh, but how difficult is it for you not to be tempted to go out and spend big bucks on a player that you know could help the Tigers, but there is some risk involved? Well, you know, it's again, it's 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 really tough because we're just coming back from, like you mentioned, a 58. It, it was a 60-game schedule. We only played 58 games because of the, the virus. Uh, but, um, you know, you come from – 58 games with no fans in the stadium. Um, obviously, uh, it was devastating to the industry, not you know, not just to the Tigers as far as uh, uh, for the economics of it. And then we're going into a future that is really unknown right now if there's going to be people in the stands and if there are, how many are going to be allowed. Uh, the virus is still an issue. Um, now, luckily, the vac- it looks like we have a vaccine and hopefully things will get better. I am very optimistic that it's going to be better uh, as we move into the summer. So uh, we're excited for you know the start of spring training and the season. But with all the uncertainties uh, from a financial perspective, the economics of the game, uh, this is probably not the I mean, this is probably not the best time to to be uh, <laughs> making a big splash. On, on top of that, you know, we we're, we're building we're building here for sustainability, not for a quick one time fix. And hey, let's just go out there and, and see what we can do this year. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you find yourself next year trying to uh, trade away those players with those salaries. So what we're trying to do here is build gradually and build it for uh, for long-term sustainability. Uh, and eventually, when you know, build a championship organization, uh, not just a, a let's say a, a one-time uh, thing. So that's really our, our have been our goal from day one. That's why it's been such a painful process. Uh, but I, but it will get better uh, uh, sooner than later. Now, uh, you know, obviously, we're going to try to make steps as we go along, and 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 you know, the team will definitely be, uh, be improving this year, and, and then uh, next year, obviously, we 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 feel that we can make a bigger step, and the year after that, even a bigger step. What areas are you hoping to address this year, without obviously naming players through free agency and maybe even possible trades? Yeah. Well, right now, um, the outlook for us is we, we've got Jamer Candelario coming back from a good season. We're very encouraged about that. We feel that, you know, obviously he's on his way to become a really good uh, everyday player for us. Uh, he can play the first or third base. Uh, right now, we got Willie Castro coming back from a very good season also. Like I said, he was a candidate for Rookie of the Year. And, you know, I'm talking to AJ. He's going to give him the opportunity to – Establish himself at shortstop. Um, we got Nico Goodwin coming back, who was a finalist for the Gold Glove, that can play anywhere, uh, any position really, in, in the infield or the outfield. Um, not sure yet if AJ is going to use him as a super utility guy, or is he going to maybe have him in one position? Uh, right now, and talking to AJ, probably going to move him around a little bit. Uh, we got Daz Cameron that. Last year we brought him up and and actually started to do well towards the end. It was a shame that we didn't have a full season for him, but we feel that he could be on his way. Jacoby Jones is coming back from his injury at center field, and we got Victor Reyes. Uh, and then we've got a lot of other young players that we're going to give opportunities to. But in saying that, ideally, you know, we would like to get uh, a, a, a good hitter to play uh, maybe one of the corner outfield positions. 
the outfielder, the outfield position has been an area of weakness for us from an offensive perspective. So maybe if we can get a, a corner outfielder that could, uh, you know, boost our, our offensive production there. Um, and, and possibly, um, you know, uh, two, two, uh, two hitters, uh, depending on how things shake out here at the end. Um, and also with our pitching, you know, we, we've got the makings for a rotation, uh, you know, led by, uh, by Boyd and Turnbull and, and Michael Fulmer. Last year we brought up Schoolboy and Mize, but ideally we'd like to bring in at least one starting pitcher to, you know, to protect us, if not two. Um, but you know, right now the pitching market is, is, is really kind of, you know, weak, I would say, but, uh, and, and so if maybe it's one starter, one reliever, and we'll just have to see how the rest of the winter shakes out. And then at the end, you know, if, if we're able to, and I'm not sure if we will be able to maybe bring in a more veteran catcher to, to kind of stabilize uh, ourselves behind the plate. So these are some of the areas that we feel that we can improve on going into 21. Um, you know, it's going to be a challenge right now from an economic point of view. The, the winter time, the winter right now is going pretty slow as far as uh, range league free agent <laughs> signings, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it uh, how it develops and we'll follow it closely and we'll try to do the best we can. Um, so, you know, that, that right now puts it in a nutshell right there going into 21. Uh, Al, uh, final question. I know I'm jumping all over here, but, uh, you know, obviously when, when you introduced uh, A.J. Hinch as your manager, uh, you guys go back a long way. You know A.J. very, very well. Uh, you know, his, his staff is getting high marks. Uh, when you hire A.J., do you just let him go and fill out his staff? Did you have a hand in, you know, uh, you know I, I'm obsessed with Chris Fetter because I'm obsessed with pitching, but, I mean, this is a, this is a real uh, – Real impressive staff. What can you tell Tiger fans about about the staff AJ put together and AJ Hinch as a manager? What can they expect to see uh, from this Tiger club with AJ at the helm? Well, we're very excited about it ourselves. Um, you know, when we when we uh, you know found the, uh, the that we had the opportunity to, to hire AJ as our manager, uh, we were very excited. Um, you know, after the interview process, um, we felt very fortunate that uh, that we were able to get him, and and through him, we were able to hire a, a really good, uh, uh, you know, professional baseball staff. Uh, to your point, you know, Chris Fetter, um, we he's been on our radar for a couple of years now, and um, and because he had a really, you know, his through his relationship with AJ and um, in the past, and they have worked together. Obviously, uh, we were able to bring him in, but you know, uh, uh, with the other coaches too, like Chip Hale, you know, at third base, who's mm -hmm. also a good infield guy, and and um, and Chris Coolball, Cooley's a you know a veteran veteran hitting coach, um, you know Jose Cruz Jr. Guys like that. It's a really good uh, professional veteran staff that uh, uh, had with, with a you know a long line of success uh, previously. So. Uh, you know, our players should be very excited about this. We're very excited about it, and, and just already having meetings with them um, and our and our minor league staff because uh, it's going to start there at the big leagues, and it's going to and it's going to trickle down all the way down to the lower levels as far as what we're teaching, uh, how we're going to how we're going to do things, uh, you know, from from top to bottom um, uh, as an organization. So it's already it's already taking shape. Uh, and it's and you know we're very excited to get going. Al Avila, unfortunately, we've run out of time. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, you know, now uh, you know every time I guess from here on out, when I watch a Christmas Carol, I'll be thinking that somewhere, wherever he is, Al Avila is doing the exact same thing. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna and I'm gonna enjoy the my Christmas my Christmas uh, goatee here for a, for another few days because it comes off right after Christmas. <laughs> really? Well, it looks good, though. You know, you, I would consider keeping it on a little longer there, Al. I mean, I, I mean, you know, you, it, it, it's a very handsome look for you. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Al, I really appreciate your time. Continued success with the Tigers. I know everyone's really, really excited uh, for the 2021 season, whatever the 2021 season is going to be. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of great young prospects and some real good Tigers. So we're really looking forward to a week. Really wish you a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, and thanks for joining us on The Headliner, Al. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Art. I appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you and everybody out there.
All right, thank you. That will do it for this edition of The Headliner, brought to you by Miller Lite. It is the original light beer. It tastes delicious. It's only 96 calories, and it's available for delivery. Daniela, back to you.